to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Arise from the depression come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Do you believe this? Please turn this scripture in one minute into a prayer. The glory of the Lord is risen upon my life. Visible for all to see. Visible for all to see. The glory of the Lord risen upon me. Visible for all to see. Halakato zabrandegede balakato zieta. hallelujah in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated there are two keys this morning very quickly i sense that god would have me just pray for the sick this morning and just speak prophetically releasing my faith with your of this conference been moments of encounter with the word his power his grace his anointing will cause and compel creation all and sundry to come to jesus are we blessed it is important that the glory of god be revealed it is important that creation see the glory of god the bible says one generation will declare his glory to another is the word dogzazo the flaunting of a man's glory it was in the similitude of what ahasuerus did remember how the story of Ahasuerus and Vashti, the book of Esther. He called all the neighboring kings. It was the custom of kings those days to show the reason why they seem to have that level of respite and respect. And so they would take them and show them around the entire palace. That was a man who was a captain and a king over 127 provinces. He was a great man. There was one reason why Vashti was banished out of the palace because she refused to participate in the revelation of the king's glory when he sent for her as his bride to come and add up to the revelation of his glory she had her own agenda and for that error of refusing to partner in revealing the king's glory she was banished out of the palace never to return there what made esther elevated con continually until with that elevation she defeated her man and even led to the promotion of Mordecai. Everything that happened in the book of Esther, if it was destructive, it was an attempt to fight the glory of the king. If it led to elevation, it was a contribution to the revelation and the sustenance of the glory of the king. Mordecai was a man who saved the king. When there was a plot to kill him, Mordecai revealed it. And for that reason, the king was saved. Esther, when it was time for her to defeat this evil man called her man, she said, King, I have come to you. I want to put a celebration. That's all I want to do. She never said I wanted to destroy her man. No. I want to put a celebration to flaunt your glory. Let the nations know that you are a great king. And the king said, what a woman. All right, you go ahead. And she put all that again. And then when it happened, the king was so happy, he said, do it again. And the Bible says, when they came to a feast called the Feast of Wines, when the king was excited with her commitment and her determination to reveal his glory, she said, oh king, there is a treacherous man in your camp. And on the strength of that, as that excitement, her man, the balance of his judgment that started with the instruction to flaunt and glorify Mordecai, finished and they hung that man on the gallows that he built himself for another. The revelation 
of the glory of God. When your life becomes an instrument dedicated towards the revelation of the glory of God, when you make up your mind that in and through your life, men will see the glory of God, you come to that place where Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 24, I think, and they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. John 15 and verse 8, please. John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified. How is God glorified? What a life. That ye bear much fruit. It's in the excellency of your results that God is glorified. He's not just glorified just by mere confession. Creation is waiting to see the revelation of the excellence of the kingdom in and through our lives. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they may glorify your father. Notice, every time men see the all-surpassing excellence of the kingdom at work in the life of a believer, they are compelled to bring glory to the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? Yeah. That means... That if my life and your life is barren of a revelation of God's power, God's grace, God's excellence, there is a dimension of the glory of God that we rob creation from experiencing. You have to understand this. It is the reason why, or one of the reasons why your pastor would so labor to speak over your life, to teach you the ways of God. Why? Because your life needs to be a reflection of the benevolence, the love, the grace that is upon this king that we serve there is a name god is called he's called the king of glory not only savior not only lord king of glory who is this king of glory he said the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle but he is king of glory Praise the name of the Lord. And so there are two keys. Listen, I made up my mind as a believer that my life will command such levels of results that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. I made a vow and a covenant with my life that I will not just be an explainer. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we are being called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, he is mighty in battle, amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus came, there was a feast in Cana of Galilee. Are we together? And then the Bible says that they were serving wine, and wine finished. Imagine with me, for instance, that this were a feast. And in the midst of guests and dignitaries, very important personalities, the wine finished so there was a serious confusion there was a a very a very serious situation that would bring shame and reproach within that feast and then mary led a few people to jesus and he told them fix uh, fill six pots with water and he said fetch it and take it to the rulers as they moved it turned to wine when they gave the rulers and they took it and said why would you do this to us everyone brings their best wine at the beginning of the feast 
And now you have waited until we have taken this old wine and then you brought this new. Then the Bible says, this beginning of miracles, Jesus did in the presence of his disciples, he says, and he manifested forth his glory. He manifested forth his glory. In your excelling is the revelation of the glory of God. In your prosperity is the manifestation of the glory of God. In your walking in divine health, in your enjoying long life. Are we together now? In the manifestation of dominion, the dominion power of the spirit over situations and circumstances. The beauty of God's anointing upon your life. The multifaceted dimensions of his grace is walking through you. When this becomes your reality, you become like Paul and Barnabas who they call Zeus and Hermes. They said you are no longer humans because this kind of result is as if you are not living within the same sociological context. There are possibilities that we must capture into our lives. Creation is waiting to see whether God lied or not. And our lives will become that canvas that will paint accurately the excellence of God or otherwise. As for me, I have made up my mind that in my lifetime, he will be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In this place, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. Hallelujah. And so there are two keys. Two keys from scripture that can allow a believer's life and a believer's experience to be a revelation of the glory of the Lord. Key number one, light. Isaiah chapter 60, where we started from, we'll read the first three verses, please. Isaiah 60, 1 to 3. The Bible says, we can, we can use KJV now, thank you, thank you very much. Arise, shine, it says... For your light is come. Not your light is available. It's always been there. But the day it comes to you. Arise. Shine to the degree to which your light comes. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says for behold the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. Is the Hebrew expression tohu wabohu. It talks of confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. If this is for you, say amen. amen. Verse 3 is where I find it very interesting. You will no longer look for them. There will be such a compelling dimension of the light and the power of God through your life to the degree that Gentiles shall come. It's one thing to look for them, but it's one thing to become the light and Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising. This is what happens when light is at work in your life. Light talks of spiritual illumination. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was praying over the church in Colossae and he began to cry unto God and to, be des to desire that they be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. Just give us verse 9. Colossians 1 and verse 9. Light. Light. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul himself began to speak to us on the basis for such is such level of spiritual dexterity ephesians chapter 3 please let's start from verse 1 we'll read verse 3 then we'll jump to verse 9 and 10 for this cause i paul are we still together this morning the prisoner of the lord jesus christ verse 2 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery 
as I wrote a four in few words, verse three now, three verse three, three verse three, please. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in few words, please continue until I prompt you, then we go to verse nine. It says, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, verse five, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. It says, as it is now revealed unto his whole beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ to the intent. This is why this mystery was given. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by me known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God. Are we still together? Yes. The Bible says that there have been things that are hidden for our glory and they are being revealed through these mysteries to the intent that we become a glorified body. We are able to reveal the excellence. You know what it means to excel? I hope you know God excels. He says, oh Lord our God, how excellent. His name is not just great, the name excels. To excel means to surpass ordinary standards. Are we together? Oh Lord our God, how excellent, he says, is your name. The first key is light. You are only able to reveal the glory of God in and through your life, your business, your family, to the degree to which you contend for definite levels of spiritual illumination. Let me tell you this. There are a class of demons that are called rulers of darkness. Their dominion starts everywhere there is the absence of light. 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 Believers must contend for light. What is light? Knowledge. The body of spiritual truth allocated for the victory of the saints is called light. We must obtain grace from God to contend for light. I love the name of your church. Word alive. Not just word around. Word that has been quickened in your spirit. Are we together? Listen. Listen. You must have such passion for spiritual knowledge. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Listen carefully. Which is build you up but to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The word of God is able to build. It is able to give. We discussed yesterday Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Popular scripture. It says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance. Ignorance is deadly. Ignorance is terrible. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the light that we possess. But the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important that we sustain the ability to contend for light. You may have heard me say this, that every level of result that we seek to produce in this kingdom, there is a, there is a dimension, a body of revelation that governs them. If it is speed you want in life, there is light that governs speed. If it is prosperity, genuine wealth and prosperity you seek, there is a dimension, a body of light that controls it. If it's health and wholeness, there is light. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4, please. Give us amplified. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's start from verse 3 and then we'll go to 4. Habakkuk chapter 3. It says, God approaching from Sinai, he came to Teman, which represents Edom, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Read verse 4 with me, please. One, two, read. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Uh-huh. Raised. The power of God hides in his light. When you find his light, you also find with it his power. Everybody say light. It's important. We must take away spiritual ignorance in our lives. 
you will never be able to be a manifestation of the glory of God in and through your life in darkness and ignorance. Light. I continue to study scripture and glean from the wisdom of those who have gone ahead of us as a search to find light. High level spiritual illumination that is able to take every darkness around your life away. Listen to me. If these doors were shut, all of the lights, beautiful lights within this auditorium were off. If you own the light of your phone, it's light but not enough to turn the night here today. Can I tell you this? There is a relationship between darkness and weeping. There is a relationship between darkness and weeping. There is a relationship between light and joy. It says weeping endures for a night. For as long as it is night in your life, weeping does not come to an end. You want weeping to come to an end, you must obtain the light that can turn night to day. How many of you have been to stadiums where there's a crusade? Sometimes it can be 2 a.m. in the night, and yet because of the level of light in that stadium, you would think it's afternoon. He made two great lights. The first to rule the day, the second to rule the night. Until those lights are at work in you, you will never have dominion in the day and in the night. Number two, very quickly for this service, the second key that we need to activate and to reveal the glory of God in and through our lives is called faith. Faith. John 11 verse 40. Faith. It takes faith to command results in this kingdom. John 11 verse 40. John chapter 11 and verse 40. Jesus said unto her, Did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe and rely on me, you would see the glory of God? There is a relationship between faith and the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. In Mark, Mark 11 now, I think, verse 20. Let's start from 22. I hope I'm right on that. Yes. Mark 11. Jesus is teaching on faith. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Fathers like Papa Hagen would teach us that the accurate rendition is have the faith of God. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, pay attention, and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, then he shall have whatsoever he says. The law is in verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. You only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you can never have it. There is a difference between receiving and having. Hallelujah. So faith. What is faith? Faith, I define it as the name given to the action that you take. Based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to that action of obedience that you take. As a response to your conviction is called faith faith is not merely believing believing is part of the faith equation but not the only there has to be an action of obedience hebrews 11 and verse 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen he says for by this law faith the elders obtained a good report hallelujah action of obedience action in line with scripture deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 the chapter from whence pastor read earlier on it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord thy god will set you high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 says all these blessings how many all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. 
faith, you have to learn to trust God. Not just to merely confess your trust. Bishop Oyedeko will say faith is not just saying what God said. Faith is doing what God has said. There is a doing to faith. There is a believing, yes, but there is a corresponding action. Please look at me. Every result that you and me would command in this kingdom, as far as the manifestation and the revelation of the glory of God is concerned, will require faith. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. It was up to him to take that risk. And he took that step of faith and he began to walk on water. And even when he was about to sink, Jesus took responsibility and lifted him up. There are many prophetic instructions that have come from your pastor as far as the revelation of gl the glory of God is concerned. If you are able to believe it and subscribe to the terms, here is where many believers miss it in the faith equation. We know what we want, but we do not understand the spiritual conditions allotted for that result. A man, for instance, who wants to increase financially and all he keeps doing is to confess and declare that in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. He's done it well, but not complete. You see, there are mysteries that connect to divine, to wealth and prosperity. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and the Bible says he tends to poverty. Next, he said, a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? It says a lazy man will not sow because of the rain, the weather, and he will beg in harvest. These are principles that control wealth and abundance, for instance. There are people who want to see the favor of God upon their life. And the only thing they know about favor is that, oh, favor should come. I'm just, I declare favor. No. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 says, good understanding procured favor. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There is a mother that gives birth to favor. The name of that mother is good understanding. There is also a mother that gives birth to hardship. The name of that mother is transgression. Are we together? When your hands are empty in the kingdom, there is an explanation for it. Lack and emptiness is proof that something is wrong. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So when your hands are empty while you go, it's proof that there's something missing in your life. There is a dimension of the glory of God that is yet to be revealed. Are we still together? I'm saying this because when we begin to pray, your assignment this morning is to search your life and find out what level of the glory of God or what dimension of glory is yet to be revealed in my life. Do not become like Naaman. Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5. The Bible talks about a great man called Naaman. A valiant man in army. So when it had to do with the matters of war and security, he was a veteran. But the Bible says he was leprous. And one day a little slave girl began to suggest to him that look, it is possible for you to be complete. It is possible for you to be whole. It is possible for your life to reflect the entirety of God's glory. And he said, how shall that happen? Come, let me take you to a prophet. And cut the long story short, he washed seven times. And the Bible says his skin became like that of a baby. Hallelujah. So I know that spiritually, you are doing well. Your prayer life is well. Your word life is well. But how about your finances? Are we together now this service this morning is to challenge us to open up to receive all that makes for the full revelation of the glory of god in and through our lives the wife of the sons of the prophet in second kings chapter 4 she had sons so she was not barren yet she was in debt and her husband died only god knows what killed the man now the debtors had come to carry her sons. And she says, no, there is need for completion in my life. This morning, when we begin to pray, we'll be praying shortly. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart when we begin to pray. And say, Lord, this area of my life you have brought, I have seen the revelation of your power. If it's prosperity, you have blessed me, you have shown me favor. But why are my children... 
Genesis 24 verse 1. Please read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Uh -huh. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? All things. It is possible for a man to be blessed in all things. In all things. Don't listen to those sociological narratives that tells you once you are a human being, there must be something wrong. God can bless you in all things. In all things. So that your life becomes such a revelation of the glory of God. Your spiritual life is on fire. You love the Lord with all your heart. Your home is in peace, reflecting the glory of the Lord. Your finances and your business concerns keep excelling regardless of the pandemic. This is what will compel men to say, Come on, is it that you are not a human being too? And you tell them, No, we are ordinary, but there is a power, there is a grace that backs us. How else will men see that you are not alone? They must see results that. If I tell you I'm alone standing here and I try to lift this, and you see this side lifted too. It tells you there is somebody who is assisting me. Is that true? We must challenge ourselves that our results are ordinary. Is the reason why people don't give glory to God. Nobody claps for me for walking. It's human to walk. You don't need to be born again to walk. But when you begin to fly, it is unusual. Is that true? Both a driver and a pilot are doing the same thing, but at different levels. Is that true? This is by no means to demean. All of them have to do with handling and, and trying to coordinate the movement of an object. But the only reason why you seem to have more regard for a pilot than a driver is the dimension that they are holding. One is holding it in the air. One is holding it on land. Two people can be doing the same business. It's the dimension and the frequency of their operation that makes the difference. One is doing it on land. One is doing it in the air. Commanding results that humans should not produce. Are we together? It is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the Lord's doing. If it's your, if it's your doing, it is natural in our eyes. I came here this morning to challenge us to shake out of ordinary results and step into a level of results where your life becomes a scripture. If somebody forgot his Bible at home, he will keep reading it when he sees you. That means he left his Bible at home. He did finish his quiet time. He was reading about the goodness of God and he had to rush for work. And he's feeling bad that I left my Bible at home. As soon as he sees your life, you are a continuation of his devotional. He's studying you the excellency of the results that come through your life. That's what it means to be a living epistle. Believe what I'm telling you. I don't glorify sickness and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, um, to insult the efforts of government and all what we have done. You know, we've been plagued with the pandemic and people have fought and done all sorts of things. But let me tell you the truth. Um, I've made contact with more people probably in the last one year with all plagues and all diseases, not just COVID, enough to kill anybody who is in his right mind and living in the flesh. I'm talking of deadly communicable diseases where there are medical disclaimers to it. This is by no means, you see, we function according to different levels of faith. Don't stand before Pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush. The condition to stand before Pharaoh is that you have had an encounter with the burning bush. I'm saying that there has to be something unusual about your life. Businessmen, hear me. For as long as you do business at the frequency of ordinary men, nobody will find a reason to sit down and honor God through your life. For as long as ministry happens at the frequency of men, just like church history said it should happen, There is a flight in the spirit. I'm trusting that all of us will join this morning. 
that in one week the results that your life will command can i tell you this do not let anybody deceive you that results don't matter the end of every argument is results and evidence a token of truthfulness results are proof that principles have been kept i hope you know that the glory of god comes as an attestation that his principles have been kept when his patterns are honored glory that's what happened in exodus chapter 40 remember the glory of the lord descended when moses built according to pattern so when the glory of god does not show up in your life it's a report card that you are violating divine patterns if the glory of god shows up in your finances shows up in your health shows up in your life it's an attestation it's a report card that there is something about the patterns of god that you are keeping and in the name of jesus i'm praying for someone that everyone who has laughed at you before this conference wondering if you are really born again it is only your tongues people used to know that you are a christian from today it will be tongues plus results dramatic results in the name of jesus christ let your light so shine before men that they may see let your light so shine before men unusual results extraordinary results unusual results look the testimony i i sat back while a brother was sharing a testimony of someone who connected online for the program i think whose mother was sick or so now imagine the revelation of jesus christ that that woman has is brought glory to the name of the lord but his results matter they are proof that you are doing something right the bible talks about the three hebrew boys it says these were men that the fire had no power over it is possible for fire to have no power over you are we together by the time you leave this service with a grace on your life and you get home and you see a text message waiting for you he says come and meet me tomorrow morning and you meet somebody and he says while we were sleeping the lord said this land you are seeing from here to here the lord said we should give it to you let me tell you this by the time you return back don't mind naysayers they'll keep saying what is there about land until poverty brings them to their knees most times people who don't have results are quick to criticize areas of their deficiencies it's only god that sees the heart oh men don't see the heart they see the outward appearance they want to see the word becoming flesh the bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among men and we beheld come see a man who has told me this was a woman who was a harlot everybody knew her now she sits with this prophet and in a little conversation he turned her whole world upside down you have five men that are not your husbands the current one you are staying with is not your husband now she brought the issue of worship i perceive then you are a prophet after engaging him she became an evangelist immediately no bible school one encounter and she said before i go to bible school let me start preaching that means she had the zeal to preach she did not have evidence enough to convince her that jesus was alive there are many people who want to serve god but the evidences that we bring are too small the madman in gathering was an evangelist he had not encountered the kind of power that turned that madness those demons kept prevailing imagine someone who would look at him and say look at the god that claims that he is love look at his creation living under a stone and i can imagine god saying are there not people on earth who will change this narrative jesus walks and meets him and the man says go 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 have you come to destroy us before our time and he says leave him immediately he went and brought 10 cities can i tell you this when the glory of god is revealed in your life the glory of god is also a crusade sermon gospel into food that is upon his plate when you meet a man who is frustrated yes you preach the gospel but in addition look what jesus did every time he forgave sin he did not leave the people in that condition your sins are forgiven but to let you know that i am abba rise and the man will rise and people will look at it and behold the glory of god from today may your life begin to command results in the name of jesus christ 
from today may your life begin to command supernatural results and one of the things that we are going to be receiving today in addition to faith is this grace that can help men produce results there is a grace for performance there is a grace that can help man produce results let me tell you this there are some possibilities that are not affordable within the realm and the world of men if you ever see a human performing this level this attaining this height and this level of results it is proof that god is with them rabbi he says john chapter 3 and verse 1 we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these signs and wonders except god be with him verse 2 no man there are things that men cannot do please hear me there are things that men cannot do there are things that men cannot do there are things only God can do and God has come to honor your praise many of you have come right from the ministrations even till today when I watch you celebrating and rejoicing I said no Lord you have to honor your people the kind of result that when someone laughs at you and says this your church you are always jumping and shouting and in two weeks you bring a result a dimension of grace you you don't have to be the one talking results have voices they can speak listen if you are always the one explaining and defending yourself is proof you don't have results Moses spoke for a few minutes and he said rod continue speaking he threw the rod on the ground to keep doing the speaking have you given your results voices to speak can your result tell men Jesus is Lord can your result tell men the glory of the Lord is real? Hallelujah. I made up my mind that everything within me that can glorify God will glorify God. I will not reject any good thing that comes from God that can make for kingdom come. If it's prosperity, Maranatha. If it's favor, Maranatha. Let it come. If his speed, let it come. If his influence, let it come. I'm saying this so that if you, buy, if people have made it to reject anything, any dimension of the glory of God, you must embrace it today and say, Lord, in addition to favor, I need influence. I need, I need to be able to stand at the gates and speak and defend his majesty. Is God wasting your time this morning? Some of you have come here sick. And now if you leave back and you say, oh, that situation, that liver problem, I came to church. Ah, what is there about church? And you go to the hospital and the same doctor who tested you says, come, where did you say you went to? You said, do you know what a life? I pass it every day. Say, that's the problem. Your life would have been 10 times better if you ever entered it one day. The next time you come, you will see people waiting at your car and say, please, is there space? Can I tell you this? Nobody leaves what works. Nobody leaves what works in the, where the carcasses are. Carcasses don't call eagles. A mango tree does not have um, protocol. A mango tree does not go to a newspaper and say, come to me. It just produces big, juicy, the same tree you pass every day. Suddenly it begins to produce mighty, mighty. You know, there's this mango. I don't know what they call it. This one that is like a human head. One big mango. Are we together? You see it hanging on that tree. And before you know it. You begin to come the same tree you ignored the same tree you ignored even jesus did not ignore a tree with green leaves jesus he came and said it looks like you have results when he did not find fruits he didn't advise the tree he cursed it cursed it every tree that does not bear fruit he said my father will prune god is obsessed with fruit bearing because it is how his glory is being revealed please hear me no matter what your endeavor is, I'd like you to be angry with ordinary results. I want to see the glory of God revealed in and through my life. I want to see the good hand of God revealed in and through my life. 
I want to see the power of God revealed through my life. When I saw this, my dear people dancing, the kind of energy that they had, that those, those dance groups, I said, no, these guys must be under the influence of a dimension of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if I dance like this, they will take me to the hospital today. The energy, it tells you it is not ordinary. From today, when people see your life, someone will call you and say, come, is it that you are the only person in this city? Are you the only person? What is all this one? In my presence, someone came and greeted two of us and gave you a gift and left me. And you tell the person, we are not carrying the same thing. We are wearing the same clothes, even if it's unco, but you are not carrying the same thing on your head. Be angry with your current level. And say, Father, there has to be something upon my life. This was a prayer I prayed many years. I said, Lord, I don't want to do ordinary ministry. And this is not just for the marketing of the flesh. No. I desire my life to be a testament of what you can do with a man and through a man. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? The name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? This is the part I want you to sing with all your heart. You are able. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Let me share with you something on a lighter note. Years ago, when we would be traveling for a ministration, um, sometimes they would wait at the airport to receive me. And people have all kinds of ways that they receive me. Sometimes they bring children with flowers. Sometimes maybe trumpeters and all kinds of things. And sometimes I just wear my polo and a jean trouser with my earphones and my phone. And when I come down from the plane, you see the people looking around, where is he? They look at my protocol, they look around, and then maybe one person who knows me, when they start greeting me, you can see the shock and the disappointment. We've been waiting two hours for this thing. <laughs> and I look at them with compassion. I say, don't worry, let's go to the stage. <laughs> it's not pride. Forgive me, forgive me, I repent if there's any... It's not pride. But listen, what I'm saying is, there is this treasure in earthen vessels. This is how people... Sometimes when people believe to you, leave them all, it's a build-up of your testimony. Don't stop it. Allow them to be done belittling you. And then they see what the favor of God can do in your life. And they stand and wonder and say, ah, My own tribesman ignored me. This man we know that does not fear God nor regard man. Yet he came and blessed you. Something must be there in your life. I want to hear you and you say, come and hear what I hear. When you hear what I hear, you will become what I'm becoming. If you are not willing to bear fruit, let me tell you this, you will be despised in this life. I hate to say this, but the world we live in, is a world that only respects results. Genuine results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but come to terms with it. If you do not have genuine, consistent results. The Bible says Gentiles will come to your light. Their kings will not come to your light. They will, be, they will hear about you, but they will be watching. But when your results becomes excelling and also passing, one day, even the queen of Sheba will come to you, O Solomon. And say, we have heard of the excellency of the hand of God upon your life. When you tell them you came from Nazareth, they will no longer laugh and say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I don't care whether your village is in the map or not. God can pick you from where you are and exalt you and give you a voice. That whenever people are talking of favor, if you are teaching someone on favor and after 15 minutes he does not understand, you just say, do you know Reverend Godwin Abba? He says, yes, say now, you understand what I'm saying? And the person says, I get it. They can, you personify a dimension of God's grace. 
God can give men speed. Well, I don't know Zechariah. I don't know all these guys. I don't know Elijah. Say, who can I find? And they just mentioned someone. He said, do you know how what are life members? You've seen what have, has happened to them in the last three months. Say, oh, you had the story too. We've had that there's, there's, there's some speed that is happening in this place. Isn't it amazing that as plenty as we are in this country, if someone steals in 24 hours, everybody knows that there was once a thief. Newspaper, internet. It's not just for marketing nonsense alone. It's also for letting the world know that Jesus is alive. Are we together? Let's bring fame to the name of Jesus through the excellency of our results. That someone can kneel down at home and say, look at what this man's life is commanding for loving God is what I rejected God to look for. I rejected prayer. I rejected worship. I rejected integrity because I was looking for money and fame. Now I've not found it. Here is a man with integrity of heart, loving God in righteousness and sincerely you have given them a proposal through your life. It's amazing the things people leave God for, pastor. They will leave God in a heartbeat looking for promotion. There are people right now who will sit at the office of people who they believe can help them from morning till night. Even at a time like this when the word of God is coming. They say, no, 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 no. I will listen to it one day. I need a contract. And God is saying, stay. One thing is needful. Matter, matter. You are worried and offended about many things. One prophetic word from this altar can set your life on fire. And yet people will ignore it. So God needs to use you as a specimen to show people that Jesus Christ is not a nuisance to advancement. That Jesus is not a nuisance to civilization. That as a politician, you can serve God and rise through God. Hallelujah. Don't believe all that thing to say everybody who rises has, has had to have cut corners. No, there are, some, there are people who have not bowed to Baal. And yet with the dignity of kingdom integrity have risen. Your results will bring people to their knees. That someone will go down on his knees. Not because he's watching a sermon. He hears of the testimonies of the wonder working power of God in your life. And says no, I've been in this same Abuja. I carried my brother I brought here and my brother came to a life and received fire in two years look what has become of his life the reason why we desire results is number one as consolations to our Christian experience but then number two the revelation of the glory of God are you ready to pray father I am tired of this level I desire a higher dimension of glory a higher dimension of results in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray are you praying this morning what a life touch my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Touch my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, take your place. Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. Your name is God. 
Emmanuel, your name is called. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. It's walking inside. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. He's walking inside. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. He's walking inside of me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I am living this level. A greater level of glory, a greater level of fire, a greater level of results in the name of Jesus Christ. The King of Glory is about to pass through my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we still together? You are going to mention every aspect of your life where it looks like there are gates stopping you from seeing the glory of God. For some of you, it's your finances. This thing has refused to answer. Don't waste this conference. For some of you, it's the area of your health. Month after month, there is always an evil report. You have this, you have that. Just when you are blessed, they now tell you you have this, you need to go to the hospital until the money finishes, then you become fine. That devil is a liar. For some of you, it's the education of your children. You spend so much money on them, they return back with evil reports. For some of you, is that there is no favor, no increase. I'd like you to pray. The glory of God must be revealed in this area, that area of my life. Mention it and lift your voice and begin to pray. Go ahead. You are in ministry, declare over your ministry. You are in business, declare over your business. It is time for the glory of the Lord to be revealed in my life. It is it's time for the glory of God to be revealed through my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have just about 10 minutes. I want to pray for you. This is my last and final session. And I truly believe that your life will never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like you to be sensitive within these next 10 minutes. I'm standing, joining faith with the angel over this house. It's time for things to change in your life. For some of you, what is coming upon you is the grace that will give you strange speed. I'm telling you, you will, you will begin to move at a frequency that will surprise you. For some of you, it's access to the gift of men. Men will arise from everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. It is seen to minister above the level of grace you are given. The Bible says every man, that means don't make statements you do not have the grace to defend. This man you see standing before you with all humility. I know what it means to be a partaker of the mercy of God. What you see is an election of grace. We are sent to the body. 
I love and I honor your pastor so much and the humility of his heart to allow the entrances of these graces to your life, to your destiny. We are made by the graces that are upon us. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. He does not anoint your cup. I know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. The cup is innocent. Is that your head is also empty. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'd like for your heart to be open just about 10 minutes and we'll pray. I'm hearing a name, Jennifer. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. Is there someone with such a name? You are at the back. I'm seeing you're a fair lady at the back. This is what God is showing me. Is there someone like that? Just help me, if please. Huh? Okay, you know the person. Who is that? Where are you from, my dear? Three of you. The person the Lord is talking to is from you, who has something to do with worry? Delta State. Who is from Delta? Where are you from? Delta State. Delta. I want to pray for you. Because I'm going to pray for you. Don't worry. Father, in the name of Jesus, listen. The Lord wants to pray over your family. Look at me. You're a member of this church? I want to pray for you in the presence of your pastor and to speak over your life. That the Lord will shift you. This is what God is bringing to your family. There's somebody who will shout under the anointing now. Please bring that person here. We just have 10 minutes. I just saw light. There is a power of God coming over someone. It's a family. For the sake of their family. Please bring the person. It's a loud shout to the hearing of everybody. The supernatural power of God. I just, I'm seeing like smoke. Just moving from the front to the back. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, I declare over your life. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bring visitations to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Naomi? I'm hearing a name Naomi. It's like Naomi. Someone with that name Naomi. This my brother I want to pray. Is there someone with that name? Naomi. You are wearing a black dress. Black. Complete. Who is that? Are you a member of this church? So that. Please listen. I know. Hold on. I know that prophecies have been corrupted. People do all sorts of things. But please don't mistake it. Not everybody is on serious with God. There are people who have paid their price and have been shown mercy by God. It's important I say this. So that you do not think every manifestation of prophecy is necessarily an operation of demons. No. My brother, I pray for you. I don't know him, but in Jesus' name, I pray for you. The way the Lord will begin to lift you. I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, please don't be offended with all due respect. The Lord is asking me to speak to you, sir. This, this uh, father on suit, you can just stand there, sir. You may not need to come just to honor him. I don't know you, sir, but I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, it will not be long from now. I don't know what it is that you do. I saw you try to climb a ladder and it broke and brought you down. And the Lord says it will not happen like it happened before. This is a word that the Lord is giving you. In the name of Jesus, may that word be so. Madam, this woman wearing a gold, please lift your hands. Just lift both of your hands. I'm seeing like oil coming on your head. And I'm asking why. Help her, please. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. And the Lord is saying it's an oil of favor, even over your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be so. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Are you here alone? There, the Lord is showing me a woman. Your child is very sick. This is what I don't know who this is. I'm seeing. I don't know what the situation is, but you have a very sick child. And, and the Lord wants me to pray for that person. 
to avert death to avert death this is a place where dead things and people come to life this is not a place where death happens in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands and I pray for you ah I'm seeing fire just coming on you in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let everything that represents oppression come to an end now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ who is Uche? Uche. I'm hearing the name Uche. 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 This is a lady. I know, I don't know. I know they use Uche for both male and female, but this is who is Alaska Branda Kaporuski Atabada. Where do you come from, my dear? Where are you from? Where are you from? Who is from Enugu? What? Give her the mic. Where are you from? No, man. Enugu State. I want to pray for you. I will pray for everyone, but there is witchcraft that the Lord wants to break right now. Amen. Are we together? The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I declare over your life that every plague why am i praying for this lady and yet the power of god is falling on other people this is what i'm seeing in a vision please bring them out i'm praying for this lady oh, that witchcraft be broken but i'm seeing in a vision the power of god is falling on people in the congregation in the name of jesus christ just bring those under the anointing we have 10 minutes for this in the mighty name of jesus everything that has to do with witchcraft and the activities of darkness right now i declare let it be broken let it be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken from left to right, front to the back, in the name of Jesus. Here at World Alive Center, anyone who is under any influence that is not of the Christ, I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against it in Jesus' name. I stretch my hands to you look at me my dear in the name of Jesus I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit and for all of you who are in front I declare in Jesus name let there be deliverance for you now please very quickly if you are trusting God for healing just lay your hands there we've not had the time to pray for the sick lay your hands I command every spirit I'm just seeing a snake rolling in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be gone now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are people who are exchangers of the glory of others. The Lord is putting in me to pray that anything that is yours but was taken away from you and exchanged, the power of God is coming on you now. It must return, I declare, right now. Let there be restoration, restoration, right now, restoration of everything missing. Help that, help that lady, please. Restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. Restoration. Everything taken from you. I'm here to pray for the sick. The Lord is telling me to pray for restoration. Hear me. Anyone sitting on your seat now. I overturn. 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 I overturn.
bring them out. I overturn, I overturn in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone who said over his dead body for you to rise, may that prayer be answered now. May that prayer be answered now. Everything that has refused to grow in your hands, in the name of Jesus, everything that is alive grows. Therefore, whatever has refused to grow, I stand in faith with your pastor and I declare increase to your hands. Spiritually, increase to your hands. Financially, increase to your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a young man. I'm seeing somebody you are into real estate. You are a young man. Who is that person? I don't mean just you just have like the idea. You are actively into it. The Lord wants me to pray for that person. You are wearing glasses. I'm seeing in a vision. Like brown dr dress. Is there someone like that? Are you a member of this church? Huh? So that we don't. What do you do, sir? I want to pray for you. You believe in the power of God? It's not only the heavens and the earth God makes, so He can make men. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sirs, I pray for you. No, you don't have to kneel. I pray for all of you standing in faith with the grace that is upon God's servant. I declare upon you you will excel in a way that when you come and stand upon this altar to testify it will be as if it's a lie but it will be true in the name of Jesus Christ and everything limiting your growth I come against it right now in Jesus name everything limiting your growth I come against it in Jesus name whatever has been missing in your life relationships prophetic connections in the name that is above all names i'm declaring to you right now wherever it is the same grace that came upon the ark of noah and made all the animals to find their way by themselves to that ark i command everything that has left you that should not have left you may it find its way back to your life find its way back to your destiny find its way back to your life find its way back to your destiny hallelujah please do not come out i will just give it as a prophetic word i'm seeing someone here you are quite an influential personality you have a court case that has been dragging for years you don't have to come out maybe because of security reasons but in the name of jesus the lord is asking me to speak to you that this month of july the lord is bringing you victory i don't know who that person is but I'm speaking as one sense that in the name of Jesus, this is like one, two, three, about four years at least. The Lord is saying he's overturning and he's bringing you victory. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray favor provoking prayers? In one minute, open your mouth. Lord, your glory revealed as favor through my life. Let it come. Lift your voice and pray. We are wrapping up. Lift your voice and pray. The favor of God. The number one reason why men succeed and advance in this life. Go ahead and pray. Your favor upon my life. Hallelujah. 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 Sir, I'm about to pray for the sick, but if you will permit me, the Lord just gave me a word 
that there are many people here who are trusting God for establishment in terms of territory, properties, maybe to establish themselves. And the Lord just spoke to me to pray over. Is, is, am I, can I pray that prayer? Psalms 44, verse 3. I want you to receive this grace and watch the wonder it will do in your life. Read with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and the light of your... Because thou hast a favor. Can I tell you this? I don't claim to know everything about business. But when it has to do with establishment, it is God that helps men. He's called Ebenezer, the helper of men. There are many people here, you are trusting God for the grace for structural establishment. When Jacob told Laban, leave me, I need to have my own home too and establish myself. Laban refused to allow him and said, I'll be giving you peanuts to keep you. Because Laban used divination and found out that the blessing upon Jacob was why his house was prospering. There are people who have refused to let you go to establish yourself. You are getting old, your family is suffering, you cannot even own a property. This is not carnality. You need to be established to give you room to serve the purposes of God. Worry can drain your spiritual life. Can I pray for that grace? There is a grace that can help people to be established. Father, you have put this word in my spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone in this great church and following online who genuinely desire structural establishment. For some of you between now and December 25th, in the name of Jesus, I send a prophetic word that Christmas this year will be in your own house. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man, he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. I declare it again. The grace that can go ahead of you and bring you into prepared blessings, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Please lay your hands. Let's pray for the sick now as we wrap up. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power, the Bible says, He went about doing good and healing not they who were sick, they who were oppressed. Sickness is an oppression. There is a biological angle to it, but there is largely a spiritual angle to it. The Bible says, for God was with him. Hallelujah. And in Matthew chapter 10, when you read from verse 1 and then verse 10, Jesus mandated the apostles. He said, as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely give. Are we together? Please place your hand. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and believe. Forget about the doctor's report now. You just believe. Oh, your healing has come. Oh, I don't know why God does this. Someone will shout loud under the anointing. The moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. I will just pray in one minute. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus Christ, shout a loud amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not just shouting. Jericho is falling. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of, help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them in the name of Jesus Christ. Gates, Jericho, 
Hear the shout. The healer is the shout of the king in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every devil that is back of any sickness, help that woman please, and any infirmity, I cause you be gone now. Leave their bodies now. You don't have to bring them out. Don't bring them out. Just hide them so they don't enjoy themselves. Right now I decree and declare from the crown of your head down to the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. My God, there's such power. The power of God is moving here. Be healed in Jesus' name. Migraine headache. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing someone with a severe problem around your chest. The power of God is touching you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone, your left, your left leg, I'm seeing, I don't know what pain, but right now in the name of Jesus, be healed. All kinds of growths in your body, breast lumps, fibroids, every devil that God did not plant, we command an exodus of it out of your body. You have a problem with your eyesight right now in the name of Jesus be healed be healed there's someone you don't have to come out I'm just praying I, I what I'm seeing is like you have a problem I don't know if it's indigestion or constipation regardless of what you eat is something that con you you are even afraid of eating because no matter how little it will trouble your stomach for a long time right now as i'm praying for you the power of god is coming upon you be healed in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone you can't sleep ordinarily until you take pills some pills that was given to you from the hospital i declare in the name of jesus christ that sleeplessness will cost you by the god of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ hotness of the body be gone now in the name of Jesus you walk for very little and then you are extremely tired you are not someone who has advanced in age but you can stand even just for a little while and you are completely tired in the name of Jesus I don't know what the medical name is but I command the spirit that is back of it to leave you now if there is anyone here called barren hear the word of the lord by this time next year return with miracle children by time next year return with miracle children now any part of your body help help that woman please any part of your body that is sick and afflicted whether mentioned or not in the name of Jesus here at Water Life on this Sunday morning, be healed now. Be healed now. And I pray for everyone trusting God for a miracle job here. I release my faith. There is a God who can help men. In the name of Jesus, like it happened in the house of Obed Edom, three months from now, Help them please. Three months from now, wherever your job is, in Abuja, in Lagos, in this nation, around the world, we call that job to locate you in Jesus' name. Every home and every family here that is unsettled, it doesn't matter what raging storm around the family, we speak right now at this conference shalom peace be still peace be still peace be still i join my faith with your father the angel over this house every level of results you seek i release my faith with you 
I push you into it by prophecy. I push you into it by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray over your finances? Have you heard of this proverb that in one day, Zion is built? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, a nation can be built in one day. It depends on who is building it. If it's an architect that is building it, you will need time. But if it's God that is building it, all he says is, let there be and there is. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, over your finances, whatever it is that you are involved with, we force it to work now. And for those of you that gates and doors have closed towards your finances, we scatter those gates now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says your gates shall be continually open. Day or night they will not be shut. So that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. It says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you. You become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Can I pray for everyone connected to this grace? Members of this church. Sons and daughters of the man of God following from anywhere. I declare. As God lifts your father and your prophet, may you partake of that lifting. As God honors his servant, may God honor you. As God beautifies his life, may he beautify your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for every faithful worker serving God in this church. Day and night, serving in secret, serving in the open. I pray for you. The reward that follows stewardship, let it follow you and overtake you. Follow you and overtake you in the name of Jesus Christ. And for everyone who is involved in the ministry of ingathering, ensuring that souls continue to come so that lives be changed, lives be transformed. According to Daniel chapter 12, in the name of Jesus, may you shine like the stars evermore. I decree and I declare over you that as you participate in helping people know Jesus through this grace, listen, I'm standing in the name of Jesus, the God who sent me. I decree and declare, may shame and reproach dry up forever from your life. I have to pray for your spiritual life. Hmm. This is a church of fire. This is a church of righteousness. This is a church of salvation. This is a church of word encounter. Anything less than that in your life. In the name of Jesus, let there be fire upon your altar now. Anyone's prayer life here under the sound of my voice that has gone down here in this conference, we fan the flames of your prayer life now. Every word study life that has gone down, passion for the word has gone down. I declare in the name of Jesus, may grace and hunger for the word rest upon you let me pray for you if there is any association that is derailing you giving you counsels of a heat of hell that is leading you away from righteousness away from dignity right now we break you free from such association Let me wrap up by prophesying Psalm 112 for you. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible says his seed shall be mighty upon earth. I pray for the children in this church. They are not here, they are in their children's church, but we pray for them. The spirit of death, if there is death over any one of our children, 
we command death you pass by you will never find expression in their lives we pray for these children they will never do anything twice to succeed in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed it says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever may your life be testaments of the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Reverend Godwin sir thank you to you and to your wife and to this entire assembly thank you for the honor and the opportunity to bring the word of the Lord it never tires me to be a blessing and I pray in the name of Jesus that you all will go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.